This episode is made possible by Xin Yun Performing Arts. Experience the beauty of ancient China before communism. Please tell me this is a Babylon Bee skit. A lot of people who watch Will Smith's onstage slap of comedian Chris Rock are saying the moment carried more meaning and charge than just a man losing his cool with another man who insulted his wife. Joining me to discuss the deeper cultural context are author and film critic Issa Nefertari Yulin, who is also a professor, and Mark Anthony Neal, author and professor of black popular culture at Duke University. Professors, thank you so much for joining the news hour. And Professor Yulin, I want to jump right in with you. You wrote a searing piece for The Hollywood Reporter in which you seem to dissect each action Will Smith took that night in a deeper context of pain, specifically what you called black pain. Why do you think it's important to see this moment, this moment through that lens? I think that any time we witness violence, we need to understand that from um, a place where we recognize the emotional and psychological state that's driving this physical response to a trigger. And Will Smith was definitely triggered that night. But I think in the broader context of American society, we need to understand what was happening there is really rooted and steeped in a 400 year commitment to black erasure, black marginalization, black silencing and the stereotyping of black people. All of that was present in a visceral felt and real way in the infamous slap. This is absolutely demented. The reason Will Smith slapped Chris Rock is because of 400 years of black erasure and black marginalization? What does that even mean? Ah! Does that mean O.J. Simpson murdered two white people because of 400 years of black erasure? You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! And notice how the Duke professor on the right was nodding in agreement. Watch this again. Thank you so much for joining the news hour. And Professor Yulin, I want to jump right in with you. You wrote a searing piece for The Hollywood Reporter in which you seem to dissect each action Will Smith took that night in a deeper context of pain, specifically what you called black pain. Why do you think it's important to see this moment, this moment through that lens? I think that any time we witness violence, we need to understand that from um, a place where we recognize the emotional and psychological state that's driving this physical response to a trigger. And Will Smith was definitely triggered that night, but I think in the broader context of American society, we need to understand what was happening there is really rooted and steeped in a 400 year commitment to black erasure, black marginalization, black silencing and the stereotyping of black people. All of that was present in a visceral felt and real way in the infamous slap. Nodding in agreement at something that sick? Before we move on, let me share with you something incredible. And that's our sponsor for today's episode, Shin Yun Performing Arts. I'm telling you, this is one of those shows that you just have to see at least once in your life. These guys portraying Chinese culture like you've never seen before. The story, the dance, the color, the music, everything is just sheer spectacular. And they pride themselves on showing you China before communism. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life changing. I'm so happy to have teamed up with Shen Yun Performing Arts to offer wave booking fee on tickets to all Shen Yun shows, especially for our viewers. They'll be in the greater LA area from April 28th to May 29th. And they're touring all across the country, so if you search on their website, you'll find a show near where you live. So click on the link below to learn more. Now, some are claiming that this slap was staged, you know, in order to goose ratings. And true, ratings went from 9 million, on track, by the way, to be the worst watched Oscar telecast ever, to 15 million. 
Now, there are at least three reasons why, why this is not true. The first is that there's no upside for Will Smith here. How is it going to benefit him to look like an out-of-control, hot-headed bully? Number two, the Academy isn't that clever. <laughs> they wouldn't have thought of this. And number three, with all due respect, Will Smith is not that good an actor. And that brings us to the second outrageous use of the race card this week. But I, I don't want to let the Josh Hawley thing lie because here's, you know, like, here's where I need the Democrats to step up. Because when they try to smear her, I need the Democrats to get up there and defend her just as vociferously as Lindsey Graham defended alleged attempted rapist Brett Kavanaugh. Like, I need that level of energy from the Democrats. But wait, there's more. What Josh Hawley is doing, let's be, let's be very clear. What Josh Hawley is doing when he tries to do this um, is he's trying to get her killed. He is trying to get violence done against a Supreme Court, court nominee. So Mr. Mistall says that to merely question someone's judicial philosophy means you're trying to get them killed? He's an idiot. Comes from upbringing. Parents are probably idiots too. Now let's follow that line of reasoning, shall we? Asking a judicial nominee about that nominee's judicial philosophy means that you're trying to get the nominee killed? Does that apply to conservative justice Janice Rogers Brown, whose nomination to the DC appellate court was held up for two years because of Biden and the Democrats using a filibuster? And when it was clear that she made it to the DC Court of Appeals, Biden goes on television and says, if George W. Bush nominates her for the Supreme Court, she'll face a filibuster? But I could see a circumstance. Mm -hmm. For example, if he set up Edith Jones, I can assure you that would be a very, very, very difficult fight, and she probably would be filibustered. What about what, Janice what? Rogers Brown, someone uh, excuse else? Excuse me, I'm, 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 I'm not, uh, by the way, I misspoke. I misspoke. Janice Rogers Brown is what I meant to say. Oh, okay. I misspoke. Thank but, you for but, saying But that. wasn't, she, wasn't, she, just, was wasn't she just confirmed, though? How do you invoke the extraordinary circumstances yes. clause of the agreement of the Gang of 14 for somebody who's just why. been confirmed? Because a circuit court of a judge is bound by stare decisis. They don't get to make new law. They have to abide by the, for example, she So, so what you're saying is the Supreme a, Court's different than different the Different ballgame. Right. Okay. Totally different ballgame. Well, that's all for today's Larry Elder on YouTube. We're now showing a shorter version of our show on YouTube. That's after being censored and demonetized for a whole year. Full episode can be watched on our website, epictv.com slash Larry Elder. That's epictv.com slash Larry Elder. You can also find out where to watch our show live on cable in your city at ntd.com slash TV. All the links are in the description down below.